Here is the 2,000 points of the 17 Shetland Light Dragoons, organized into two battalions and one spearhead formation. First battalion is led by my Tempester Prime, and then has a Primaric Psyker attached to it as well. Tempester Prime has the Rod of Command, and additionally he has the Relic of Laurels of Command to give him that chance to give his squads the second order. The squads themselves are made up of this eight-man squad, sergeant with power sword, and then of course uh, eight-man squad with two melty guns, and then two identical squads of seven. Sergeants have the power swords, and then the hot shot last guns as standard. The second battalion is the infantry cadre. That's led by a company commander and another uh, primary psyker. The primary psykers both have Night Shroud and Psychic Barrier as their Psychic Powers, and of course, in addition to Smite. There's three squads back there. Each one is armed with a Flamer and a Voxcaster, and the Sergeants have the Pistols and Chain Swords. They have two Armored Sentinels, each armed with the Auto Cannons, and then my three Chimeras, uh, two of which are armed with the Multi-Lasers and Heavy Bolters, one of which has the Dual uh, heavy bolters. Then my spearhead detachment, we have the warlord over here on the right. He is in a vanquisher and he has a last cannon. Uh, his command trait is going to be master of command to give an additional order. That brings him up to a, a total of two orders per turn. And then he has Kurov's Aquila. Obviously I pay one command point for that. There's a second tank commander there on his left. He's in the Executioner with the two side sponsons being the Plasma Cannons and the Heavy Bolter on front. Behind them we have the Trusty Punisher with the three Heavy Bolters and two stock Lehman Russes uh, which make up one unit entry. They each have the Lehman Russ Bell Cannon and then the Heavy Bolters on front. And then lastly for a little indirect support we have the Manticore with the Heavy Bolter on the front. All in all, 2,000 points. For a total of 10 command points, 9 after I take my second relic. Ready to take on the Crimson Fist. Alright, Jake here with 4th Company Crimson Fist. Comes out to 1997 points, 105 power level. Uh, starting out with HQ choice, uh, we have Captain Cortez right there. He's armed with a Thunder Hammer and Bolt Pistol. And he's wearing the Armor Indominus as his uh, relic. Next to him we have Librarian Probus. He has a Force Axe and a Plasma Pistol. And he will have Veal of Time and Fear of the Ancients for his Psychic Powers. In the back uh, we have a five-man Scout Squad. Sergeant with a Combat Knife and a Bolt Pistol. And uh, it's a standard five-man Scout Squad right there. It's uh, Scout Squad Pasquale. Then we have uh, three Tactical Squads. First Tactical Squad, Tactical Squad Cristofaro with a, a Power Fist, Bolt Pistol, multi melta melta Gun. Then we have Tactical Squad Pharaoh with Power Sword, uh, Bolt Pistol, uh, Plasma Cannon, Plasma Gun. Then we have Tactical Squad Eustace. And he has a Chain Sword and Bolt Pistol, Plasma Cannon, Plasma Gun. Then we have behind him, we have an Assault Squad Gamel. And the sergeant has a uh, combat shield and bolt pistol and power fist. And there is a plasma pistol and a flamer in that squad. Behind them, we have Devastator Squad Lunas with uh, two Laws Cannons and two Missile Launchers. And he has a bolt pistol and chain sword. And then behind them is Devastator Squad Mentius. And he has a bolt pistol and chain sword, two plasma cannons, two heavy bolters. And behind that, we have uh, Venerable Dreadnought Helicius. He has a twin-linked Laws Cannon, a uh, Dreadnought uh, Combat Weapon, and he has a Heavy Flamer. Flanking him, we have uh, Landspeeder Gregorio and Fortrinus. Uh, Landspeeder Gregorio has the Heavy Bolter and the Typhoon Missile Launcher. And uh, Landspeeder Fortrinus has the Assault Cannon and multi melta And then we have two Rhinos to support the tactical squads. 
So how many command points does that net you, Jake? That's a battalion detachment. That's three command points, bringing me to a total of six. Okay, fantastic. And they are ready to take on the 17th Shetland Light Dragoons. So let's go over mission and deployment next. What is the location? All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's mission is going to be Cloak and Shadow. So that means both Jake and I will have three objective cards at the beginning of each turn. Uh, those will be kept secret until we score those. So you will be kept in secret as well. Well, it's going to be kept secret from you, I should say. Uh, other special mission rules is if you're shooting at something over 18 inches, it's minus one to hit. And you can use flares for one command point to make that go away. Of course, this is match play rules, so you can only do that once per turn. Uh, other than that, Jake, the deployment style we have tonight is hammer and anvil, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go over where the Shelties are set up. Back there, I got my armored Sentinel, making sure no deep strikers come in. Well, I got the uh, Plasma Cutioner, the Punisher, and the Chimera online. This is not the Command Chimera, so that's just a squad in there. There's the Command Chimera with the antenna up there, the Company Commander on top. Uh, we got 1-3 over there with the dual heavy bolter with a sentinel providing guard for them. In the back I got the two stock Lehman Russes and the Lehman Russ Vanquisher. That is my warlord with Karofs Aquila. Back here right of fire is the Manicor and I also have a Psyker back there, primary Psyker, uh, to make sure that I'm dropping, making sure it's not easy for Jake to deep strike there. So uh, that is the Imperial Guard deployment. Jake, talk us through your forces. Well, like... I got a deep strike on a lot last time. We're going to deep strike prevention a little bit here. Maybe I'm playing a little bit uh, off today. Looking at my setup here. But anyway, over here we have Captain Cortez. Why is he alone? Because he's a boss. Over here we have a tactical squad. Over here we have a tactical squad. Uh, another tactical squad right here. Christopher with the Melty Melta and the Melty Gun and the Power Fist is in here in this Rhino. Got the Librarian right here with the uh, Preventable Dreadnought Helios. Got the uh, Land Speeder over here with the uh, Assault Cannon and Melty Melta. Lance over here, the Typhoon Missile Launcher and Heavy Bolter. The two Devastator squads and an empty Rhino over there. And the Scout squad over here tucked up behind the house on Objective 1 using their 9 inch from the enemy line scout rule to uh, just jump on that objective real quick from the get go. Alone and unafraid, as they say in the business, I believe. Yeah. Okay, Jake, so now at this point we're going to roll off to see goes first. Jake got done deploying before I did. Uh, I have rolled a 4. Jake gets a plus 1 to his roll. That's a 3, so it's a tie. So we'll do it again. This time, uh, another four for me and a dead scout. While well, Jake gets a spinner, a six. Jake is going first. Unless, of course, I can steal the initiative. On a six. That's a six. I guess it's your turn, Mike, to do it on me as well. It's like twice in a row now, eh? Hey. Eh? <laughs> All right, so uh, guard turn one. Here we go. Turn one, guard movement, and we have uh, started moving forward with some of the units. Uh, Plasma Cutioner moved up five while I moved the uh, Punisher into the center, full 10 inches. He's just going to wait there. And the Chimeras have all advanced, uh, keeping the squad in here, keeping the headquarters element in there. I got these guys and advanced them out into the ruins while moving one, three up in support. Uh, back here to shuffle things around a little bit. But everything else is uh, pretty, pretty kosher, so we're going to just go with that. We're going to try to shoot that squad off that objective and then roll forward with, uh, with this Imperial Guard force that you've come to know and love. In Guard Turn 1 Psychic Phase, that primary Psyker right there cast Psychic Barrier to give that Lehman Russ a plus one armor save. Well, this primary Psyker over here failed to manifest Night Shroud on the tank commander. So now we're going on to the shooting phase. The 17 Shetland Light Dragoons don't like the dark. Uh, we did use a stratagem to put a flare on this vehicle uh, because I had ordered this tank right there to reroll ones to hit. Despite that, he only managed to do two damage. And then uh, the Mana Core helped none at all, nor did that particular Sentinel. Um, he didn't really have a shot. He's there to prevent deep strikers. My bold move was this Chimera up the middle with this one and that one all shooting into the scout squad. 
Uh, only managed to kill two scouts. The Vanquisher, needing force to hit, uh, did manage to hit once uh, at that particular rhino, and uh, Jake failed to save there. Rolled a five and a two, so taking the highest damage was five. So I got him knocked down to half wounds. Uh, while his two wingmen uh, targeted the rhino, no damage, and then targeted that speeder, also no damage. I had hit four times and then failed to wound all four times. Um, that squad just kind of stayed in place, and that auto cannon shot these scouts. So all together, damage done. Two points to this rhino, two scouts, and five points to that rhino. So I think, Jake, you must be feeling pretty good right now. I feel pretty good, Mike, right now. Um, you know, it feels good to survive that round of shooting from the guard. I mean, the dice definitely were against you. I was surprised you didn't command point a few of those. I think you might have been able to knock out one of the rhinos in command point rolls. Yeah. Possibly. I was looking for first blood, but it's not that important to me. So we'll go back, and I'm going to let you know if I scored any points. As a matter of fact, I can tell you right now, I have not scored any points at this point. So... We'll go to Jake's turn one. Turn one, Crimson Fist. All right, movement space. Land Speeder, move down here. Then we'll, we'll Dreadnought Helicius, move down the slope six inches. Chaplain Provost, move six inches right behind him. The uh, Titan Squad, Cristofaro. Disembarked from the rhino. The rhino moved up six inches. It is down to six inch movement due to the amount of wounds it has. Uh, Devastator squads both stayed still. This squad shuffled around a little bit. Captain Cortez stayed still. That rhino tucked in there behind the building. Scout squads shuffled around a little bit. And that's the end of my movement phase. They're hugging that cover right there. Okay, do you have a psychic phase coming up? Psychic phase. All right, we'll be back after that. All right, Librarian Provost in the psychic phase. He got off smite with a six on the Chimera right here. And he put Vila Time on Tactical Squad Cristofaro, allowing them to reload all their charge distances. So far, everything's coming up Crimson Fist. Let's see how their shooting phase fares. All right, starting off my shooting phase, the uh, Assault Squad in the back here, the Plasma Cannon didn't move. Took some wounds off the uh, Command Chimera. And we finished her off with uh, Venerable Dreadnought Helicius. Uh, next thing that came up, the uh, land speeder shot the multi melta at the Chimera, taking some wounds off of it, and the assault cannon at the squad, taking some members out of the squad. Tetra Squad Cristofaro shot the melta cannon, uh, the multi melta, and the melta gun at this, uh, causing a few wounds with the uh, melta gun. It's down to a total of two wounds. The Tactical Squad shot up some more of these guys, as well as uh, Sergeant Pasquale and a scout squad over here. Um, the uh, Rhino, I don't believe did any wounds in the squad at all either. Then I shot the squad here. I shot all their heavy weapons at the Chimera as well. It did no damage. The tactical, the rest of the Marines in the assault in the Devastator squad shot the Scout squad or shot the uh, squad here. This Devastator squad over here tried to finish off the uh, Chimera. They did not. And I'll note that I forgot to make the announcement, but both Devastator squads use their Armory Cherub. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, so hit me on it in the comments, whatever, I'm American, I say it how I want. Um, Typhoon Missile Launcher here from the Land Speeder did nothing to the Chimera here, and uh, that was a shooting phase. Okay, a couple things. The 18 inches and over is really messing with both of us right now as uh, we struggle to hit unless we get close. I did use the Stratagem take cover for that guard squad, which is why there's still two guys there. It's not going to be enough to save them, I, I fear. But uh, since the new GW fact came out for Imperial Guard, I can't use it for my vehicles anymore. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and burn a command point to do that. Jake also used a command point to reroll one dice on that plasma guy, so he is down one as well. Kurov's Aquila did not kick in, so no joy there. But we'll be going to the assault phase next, right, Jake? Yep. Giving us a preview. Let's see what happens. Okay, Jake, tell us about your charge phase. All right, uh, Tactical Sergeant Christofaro, 
decided to hold off in his squad moving forward at the last minute. They took a cue off the librarian and said, hold the line. And uh, Captain Cortez was able to secure me objective six, being three inches away. Okay. I measured him up. That's why I placed him three inches away from the get-go to be from that objective. And I also have hold the line for having three units back in my turn. Okay. In addition to that, you got first blood. Yes. With that chimera. I did defend objective four, Jake. You didn't know that's what I was doing with my squad over there. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they were doing. Uh, I need a morale check on the squad that lost eight. Their leadership is seven. So even if I roll a one, I don't know what happens. Let's roll the dice. Bad at math. One. Oh, one guy's so that's nine. That means I have one guy left, right, Simon? Yes. You're good at math. No, no. Because I lost eight plus one is nine. Leadership seven, which means I lose two additional guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're still, uh, this guy's still alive. Well, that's my commander, so that's my captain. So. Okay. I lose the squad. That's what it comes down to. I'm bad at math, and I lose the squad. So, uh, well, that's unfortunate, but that's what it is. So, we'll be back with guard turn two. Uh, right now, the score is three to two. Exciting. Hi, Adam. So the Shelties have uh, moved across the table with the squad that was in here advancing to take objective one uh, for reasons, while these two Lehman Russes have moved around uh, just a tad. Uh, this one coming up in support. Over here, I moved my primary Psyker over towards the tanks, where the Manticore moved the same, remained the same. Primary Psyker and these three Lehman Russes moved up with that uh, Sentinel in support. I moved this Chimera back a little bit. This squad moved up in the ruins just to make sure they can't get charged. Heavy Flamer's still going to be annoying. And then lastly, I dropped in two squads of Scions along with the Tepester Prime back here in order to try to take care of some of the stuff in the middle and start pushing towards Jake's end zone. So with that, we'll go on to the Psychic Phase for the Guard. So the Psychers attached to the 17 Shetland Light Dragoons have done their job. We've put Night Shroud on the Tank Commander and then Psychic Barrier on his wingman, uh, giving the tank commander minus one to hit and him plus one armor save. So I did use a command point in order to reroll the double sixes I had, uh, resulting in it just going off and Jake is not close enough to make it stop. So on to the shooting phase and we need a big one here, folks. The 17 Shetland Light Dragoons are back, people, in a big way. So starting with some orders, this tank commander gave himself first rank fire, second rank fire. This company commander gave this squad first rank. Sorry, that's not first rank fire, second rank fire. That is reroll ones to hit. Uh, over here, this company commander behind the church gave this squad first rank fire, second rank fire, and then used the box caster to box over to them to do the same thing. While this uh, Tempestor Prime gave this squad right here first rank fire, second rank fire, using the laurels of command, rolled a four up, and was able to give them reroll ones to hit as well. Well, he gave that squad first rank fire, second rank fire. And then back here, you see my tank commander? He gave those two wingmen uh, strike and shroud, so they shot, and then they used their smoke launcher. So what do we do? Well, a little disappointing in that there's a scout sergeant left here, and there's gonna be a theme here of one guy left. Uh, despite pouring all our shots in there, Jake made some good saves, and he still has one guy left. And then the Tempestus Scions, along with that squad up there, along with some other shooting, managed to reduce that squad to one. The Vanquisher cannon and the last cannon from the Vanquisher managed to drop four wounds off the Rhino uh, with one hit from the Vank and one hit from the last cannon, but failed to kill it. Uh, we did a total of five wounds to that right there, that uh, land speeder, and we did one wound with the Manticore to this Dreadnought here. Hitting on fives is very difficult. We did use our stratagem of flares to light these guys up. And so that allowed this uh, plasma cutioner overcharging its guns to kill quite a few of them. And then it was aided uh, by one of the battle cannons back there. So I did overheat one time there, so it's down to 11 wounds, but no big deal there. This chimera here shot into the squad, but didn't do any damage. So. Right now, Jake, I am not going to be making any assaults, but you owe me two morale checks. Both those sergeants are dead. All right, so you're not going to spend the two command points to save them. 
Mm. I don't blame you there. And uh, the guard will then go ahead and take control of the center of the field. Now the guard for their porter part are gonna score some uh, points here. We have secure objective one, and since we have objective secured, not to mention 10 to one ratio against Jake's scout squad there, uh, take that one. And then we also have secure objective four. So I told two points back to the guard and we're feeling a little bit better about our situation as we've destroyed a total of two squads and, and knocked these other two uh, vehicles over there down and overall very well. We're certainly not in the clear yet, but it does help. So we will go to Imperial Fist, turn two. Two slight addendums. First, this is not the Imperial Fist, this is the Crimson Fist. And I know they're the same thing, but Simon's being insistent that they're not. They're not. And then Jake has something to say. Defend objective six. Captain Cortez doing his thing. Jeez, he's got me three points already. So, Jake, how many points did that give you all? That told? gives me four points. And to include first blood. Yep. That's uh, to my four uh, points. That's four points total. Yeah. And I got four points as well, but, Jake, it's your turn. So you're going to be able to score some more points here, presumably. Good luck. Jake's bad at math. How many five points do you have? Five. Defendant objective is two five. points. So Jake is winning 5-4 at this point, and he's about to score some more. Presumably, I don't know, because these are all secret objectives. Mm -hmm. Hush, hush. But uh, we shall see. But that's why you have four Simon for mathematics. Yeah. He missed. All right. Movement phase. Sergeant Pasquale, seeing the company commander in the open, it's like this guy's going down. You take my squad of neophytes away from me, you're gonna get some. Uh, Venerable Brother Hilesius moved forward along with Chaplain Probus. The Rhino moved forward three inches. Land speeder over here jumped over here. This land speeder, even though he's in the back, he's kind of inside this terrain, three inches away from the objective, but one inch away from the squads while the model sternum is why he's sitting out the back. Captain Cortez is holding back here. Take two tax, this tax squad shuffled around. These guys right here stayed still. These guys stayed still. The uh, Rhino stayed still. And right back here, we have uh, Salt Squad Gamel jumping in, nine inches away from the Manticore, because they're gonna make their illustrious nine inch charge. Take it out. Mancor is not doing anything for me anyway this game. Jake, what exactly is that captain doing back there? That's, That's like Captain the... Cortez. He's directing the troops from his tactical advantage point in the rear. Gotcha. Okay. I like it. Very Space Marine-esque of him. Uh, we'll be back with the psychic phase next because that is a librarian, not a chaplain. Uh, psychic phase, a librarian provost um, to cast his smite on these guys, taking two of them out. He attempts to cast Fear of the Ancients, but only rolled a four, needing a seven. It's just out of range to try to deny him on that one, so well done. Now on to the shooting phase. Right. Uh, we'll start off here. I use the flare round on this uh, Punisher. I got a uh, command point back for that. Venerable uh, Dreadnought Helicius. He used his heavy flamer on these guys, taking out, I believe, like four or five. Five. Then he five used his twin link laws can on this guy, and I think he took like uh, four wounds or something like that off of yeah. him. Yeah. Then. Uh, Librarian Probus, he shot his plasma pistol to no effect. This guy right here, the land speeder, he shot his assault cannon, killing like uh, two more of these guys, and his multi melta at the Chimera that used to be here to no effect. Storm Bolter here, right here, tried to kill some guys off to no effect. Hitting on fives was rough. Land speeder, I don't think it did anything, shooting its crack missiles at this guy, and its heavy bolter at these guys. I think he took out two more of these guys right here. Yeah, he was also hitting on fives. Yeah. Then uh, Sergeant Pasquale was unable to hit the augmented captain down there because of trickery. Uh, back over here, Devastator Squad. Um, two Laz cannons stripped this thing down to four wounds left. The two missile launchers shot frag missiles at the last guy over here in this squad, Killian. These guys right here Killed one dude here? No, I made my five up That's safe. That's right, you made your five up safe. Yeah. And uh, back here, um, Saul Squad Gamal was able to take a wound off the uh, Sentinel. Sentinel. Yeah, Armour Sentinel. Yeah. So overall, Jake, I, I think a pretty good turn for you. 
Uh, let's see what happens in the assault phase next. All right, assault squad Gamel attempts to charge Manicor, losing one guy in the attempt. And the Manicor did use defensive gunner stratagem for one point. I rolled a two and a one on the Manicor uh, Storm Eagle rockets. Uh, chose to use another command point to reroll the one in order to roll another one. Uh, but despite that fact, I did manage to kill one of them on the way in. And then my heavy bolter hitting on fives hit twice and wounded twice, but Jake made both four up saves. I used a stratagem point uh, yeah. to uh, try to reroll a dice for the charge distance and rolled a two again, so a total of seven inches. I did not gain one back for that. Okay, so over here. Sergeant Pasqual charged the captain and uh, they caused no wounds to each other, either in Overwatch or in combat. Okay, and he has tied up both the squad and my captain. All right. Uh, as far as scoring, Jake, you want to take us through that? Scoring, I scored supremacy for D three. I'll roll that right okay, now so on the camera. So that was there, there. Oh, that's a one. Do you want to use a command point to re-roll that? Why not? Six. So that's three points. My re-roll uh, is cocked to see if Kurov's Aquila takes off. It does not. So Jake scores three points on supremacy. That was his other one that he's holding people. And then I scored a uh, big game hunter for destroying the Camara, which is a vehicle that had uh, 10 wounds or more. Yep. And uh, I'm throwing away Secure Objective 1. Okay, so Jake did uh, rack up some points, four points this turn. Pretty good. We'll see what the Shelties can do in their turn three. In turn three for the 17 Shetland Light Dragoons, uh, we have moved him close to the building. Uh, while these guys have disengaged from combat, as has my captain, uh, I have moved these signs up looking for targets and those signs up looking for targets. All three of these tanks scooched up five inches while that sentinel remained in place. Uh, this Lehman Russ, which is in the second bracket, not the last bracket, had moved back seven inches. So it's only gonna be far in his top Cannon once, uh, but he moved back five inches, so he'll have his full profile. Sentinel moved back just in case I don't kill them, and this primary psyker moved closer to them as well. So, uh, pretty clear what I need to do. Let's see if I get some good dice rolling, first of all, in the psychic phase and then in the shooting phase. So, this psyker has cast smite, bringing down three of those assault marines. That's a good start. This Psyker, again, rolled double 12, forcing me to spend a command point, not the peril, end up rolling a nine, so we have put Night Shroud on the tank commander. Jake was just out of range with his librarian. Now onto the shooting phase. So on the shooting phase, uh, after these guys disengaged, they were given the order to first rank fire, second rank fire, and that's what they did, killing Sergeant Pasqual, Pasqual uh, dead. Uh, this Punisher managed to kill just a couple of guys back there. Uh, was helped out by uh, the Executioner, and then Jake started making some crazy saves, and then I had to fire the Storm Eagle auto rocket, cannon. and the auto cannon. Uh, I, I think it was finally the Heavy Bolter that managed to kill the rest of them off, so they are, they are not dead at least. Uh, some additional orders were given uh, to include first rank fire, second rank fire, and reroll wounds against vehicles uh, because the laws of command. So this squad managed to do a bunch of damage to the Dreadnought, and then it was the Vanquisher cannon that actually finished them off. These guys over here also uh, popped on the Laurels of Command, so they got first rank fire, second rank fire, and reroll wounds against vehicles, and destroyed that uh, land speeder. So that was that was excellent. Uh, and then that battle cannon there rolled uh, double ones for shots and didn't do anything. Well, I'm sorry, he did two wounds against this land speeder, right, Jake? Yeah. Uh, and the heavy bolter didn't do any wounds against the rhino. Uh, difficult hitting times, obviously, but we did okay. And this squad dropped in, but did zero wounds over here. Overall, though, uh, to recap, got rid of the Dreadnought, the Land Speeder, and an Assault Squad, and looking pretty good. So we're going to take a look at cards, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and tally those up. No Assault for the Guard, but I know I scored at least two. The Imperial Guard have secured Objective 5 right there with the Chimera. They scoured the skies clean with the destruction of that land speeder, and we're getting rid of secure objective number six. So an additional two points for the guard. We go to the Crimson Fist, turn three. All 
Ron had moved back three inches. Landon Speeder jumped over here. Captain Cortez advanced tactfully behind these barriers. This tactical squad, tactical squad Pharaoh, advanced over here. These guys shuffled up. Devastator squad stayed put. Rhino stayed put. Chaplain moved up six inches. He's on the first layer of this uh, ruin here. He moved about five inches. And then this land speeder jumped over as well, right? Mm hmm. Okay, so on to the psychic phase. All right, Jake. Second phase. Librarian Provost failed to do smite and fear of the ancients, rolling fours, both or six and a four for the second cast on these uh, squad right here. Love it. All right, on your shooting phase. All right, Crimson Fist, turn three, shooting phase. Chaplain Provost didn't feel like shooting these guys, so he shot into the air to give them a fair warning. The uh, Storm Bolter over here, I think, took a guy out. Mm -hmm. The uh, guys back here all shot at them. Did they take anybody out? Like two guys, maybe? I don't think so. I don't think they took anybody out. These guys and the uh, Rhino over here took out two more dudes. Yep. The uh, Laz cannons blew up the uh, Punisher. Punisher. And it blew up. Yeah. So Plasma that did a wound, wound on the Plasma Cutioner. The crack missiles did nothing to this guy. And he made two five up saves. Yep. So right. The rest of these guys shot at them doing. Yeah, no wounds. Yeah. 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 And then uh, this guy shot at him to no effect. Heavy bolter at them to no effect. I did use a stratagem to take cover on the infantry once again. Uh, now they don't use it on the tanks. It's actually a lot of fun to use on the infantry. So plus one to GW on that one. Okay, we got some assaults coming. Hell yeah. All right, well then let's prepare our defensive fire. All right, Jake, assault phase. Assault phase. Um, Librarian Probus charged into these guys, um, taking out three, suffering one wound himself. Um, he really scared him with that plasma shot. I think it caused the sergeant to drop his power sword, possibly. Now, you also use a command point in order to kill that third guy, so. It helps. Yes, it does. And then that was the only charge, so I owe you a couple morale checks. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys have lost three, leadership seven, uh, plus five is eight, so I'll lose an additional one there. Same thing with that squad over there. Uh, that's a six, so I will lose two there. Uh, pretty brutal. How about for scoring? For scoring, secure objective two. Okay. There's tactical squad Pharaoh securing for me over there. Uh, no prisoners, score one victory point of enemy. It was destroyed during your turn. Uh, so I destroyed this guy right here. Fortunately, it was the only unit I was able to destroy. Probably up between three and five, I would score D3 victory points instead. Still, two points is pretty impressive. What's yep. that bring you up to? So I have. Um, shoot. I'm getting my up. supremacy. I rolled three. Uh huh. So that means in my, I got first blood. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm getting killed on points again. And if you uh, can't tell what Jake's doing, I'm this going is way advance. Operation get behind the cover in order to not get tabled. So we'll see how that works out for him. As we come back with the Shelties, turn four. Okay, so in the guard movement phase, they went ahead and moved up uh, while these guys advanced up, as did the captain. Chimera stayed put. Uh, both those units advanced up while that unit of Scions moved out of combat. Over here, these both moved 10 inches while he moved 5 inches. Chimera stayed there. Uh, the Psyker advanced 6 inches for a total of 12. Move this Sentinel near objective number 3 and then moved him up 5 inches. We went ahead to the Psychic phase. He failed to cast Smite on the Librarian, only rolling a 4. And then the Psyker who moved back here attempted to cast a Night Shroud on that Lehman Russ, but it, that Librarian managed to deny it. So. On to the shooting phase, see if we can kill some more Crimson Fist. So the 17 Shetland Light Dragoons, as only they can do, have moved out at a quick pace. Uh, orders were given by this captain for this squad to move, 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 and move, 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 they did. Uh, that Tempester Prime ordered them to move, 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 and move out, they did. Uh, these, this tank commander gave himself and his wingman there the order to go ahead and shoot, get behind them. So after they shot, they got to move an additional six inches. 
And then it was the same deal uh, with this commander right here. He gave himself the order to shoot and then move. So with the orders done, uh, the Vanquisher turned his turret and managed to kill the Librarian that was there, where just his bloody wound marker is now, and killed him. Uh, while this tank right here uh, managed to shoot in and destroyed the speeder that was here. It blew up, killing one of my guys, unfortunately. Uh, this Lehman Rust right here only getting 1d6 on the main gun. Uh, fired at the Rhino, unfortunately he rolled a 1 and ended up doing no damage, which meant the Plasma Cushioner had to go finish the job for him, which he did. Uh, lastly, this Chimera here managed to take one Marine off the bridge. Uh, so overall, when I look at the score, my secret objectives were secure objective 1. My captain has that. Behind enemy lines, which is good for D3. We're going to roll that right now. Roll a one or two. I will re-roll it if it's that. It's a four. I will keep the four uh, for two points. And then blood and guts, destroy somebody close combat. I'm getting rid of that one. So, Jake, we go to your turn four next. Okay, consolidate turn four for the Crimson Fist. Jake, you want to talk us through? Yeah, uh, Cortez hit, because that's what his technical genius is telling him to do. The uh, Laws Cannons here took six wounds, and a crack missile took one wound off the tank commander. So he's done five, five wounds. Yeah. And used a flare there. Kurov's yes. Aquila did kick in, giving me another command point, so I'm up to three. This squad back here took th two wounds off the Shimmer? One wound with one the plasma wound. cannon. And uh, the rest of the does here squad killed the squad right here. This Rhino over here advanced over to there. He's just there chilling. Yeah, it seems odd. Uh, as far as um, scoring, do you score any no points? But you do throw one away? Did throw away domination. Okay, I don't score any points either. You know what? I haven't had more than one defend card tonight. I would really like some defend cards. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but these two scions are dead thanks to the bolters. I mentioned it. Okay, very angry Crimson Fist there. <laughs> All right, so we'll come back with the Imperial Guard, turn five, next. That's a direct order. Do it now. So the 17th Shetland Light Dragoons, uh, consolidated turn. We went ahead and advanced these guys up and advanced those guys up while the Tempestor Prime has moved back to these ruins in order to make sure he stays alive. Uh, after moving my tanks up, this tank commander gave a tank order uh, for the front tank to move an additional six inches after he got done shooting and this guy just moved flat out for an additional move uh, pedal to the metal type stuff. Well this tank commander gave himself three roll ones to hit. Uh, a bunch of shooting mostly from this plasma but also from uh, these units over here managed to destroy this right here. Um, no shooting over there. I did take two points of damage off of this rhino uh, with that auto cannon right there, but fairly uneventful other than that squad just being entirely destroyed. Unfortunately, I scored no points. I will be getting rid of Witch Hunter uh, because I already killed the witch, and unfortunately, I don't get any help there. Because so, of your house rule, you could have got a card that was probably domination or something cool. Jake, it's not a house rule. <laughs> it is the rule. The rule in the book. All right, so we'll no be back. Plays it but you. Now, that's true, but... <laughs> That's what we do here. So we're going to go back to uh, Jake's turn, number five. Uh, he is ahead on points, scarily, so we'll see how he does. But Mike's going to go to six and seven, because I'm going to drag this out, and he's going to win. Yeah, it's getting late over here, so people are getting cranky. Arwen. Arwen Mikulovna. Yes, that's you. Good girl. Okay, Jake, take us through a very quick turn five for the Crimson Fist. Tough Squad Pharaoh tactically tucked themselves away behind the barriers. Tough Squad over here stayed put. This guy moved up 12 inches, shot at this guy, causing no wounds. These guys took the whole squad shooting, took one wound off of this guy. Captain Cortez tactically stood put right there, luring these guys back so he could hammer them all in the face with his sledgehammer. Um, I scored a Defend Objective 2. Yeah, two points. That's two points, and I secure objective behind any lines. Okay. This guy. All right. So with that, I have to roll a dice to see if the game continues on a 
three or higher, it will continue on a two or less. I believe you're gonna win, sir. So let's see what we get here. That's a one. For the first time ever. I'm gonna use a command point to re-roll that. <laughs> That's oh. six. So I got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was dirty. Eleven. I have fourteen. Okay, you're killing me. So I got I gotta do something here. Let's see what we draw. Jake, it was fun to make the game go on, but I, at this point, I am going to concede. I just drew my cards. They're no good. Um, and I'm not going to be able to kill all of you. So you were saying something before. Anyway, this may not have been the best technically generaled game. I think if you drug it out for two turns, maybe you could kill my commander. I think your, your objectives have to be there to get the cards to get you something of points. Yeah. Go to just... your next three cards if like you discarded one. Okay. Because I have a secure objective. Whoa. Just so everyone knows, what I got is uh, defend objective six and then uh, psychological warfare. And uh, then I still had the uh, priority orders received, which was going to be no help. So You would have got objective six for two more points. Yeah. I what's mean, your, well, what's your other card next? So the next three were. St I mean, they're pretty good cards, but that's if it would have gone on. Secure six, defend two, and secure three. So, anyways, I do concede. How many points was this? Good game, sir. How many points did you have in the end? In the end, um, I would have gotten line breaker, obviously. Same here, unless you destroyed that. But yeah, chances would be good, but yeah. anyway. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, it's a great line. 15 if I have line breaker. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 15 to 9, uh, 10 for line breaker. There was just no way I was going to catch him with the cards I was drawn. So, good game. It's been a really long, <laughs> hard fought match. Uh, I got to take some line of sight blocking train off of my table because that's two games in a row now. The Shelties have just. Raffle stomp the enemy only to have them hide and cower at the end and uh, Despite how fast they are uh, Unfortunately, you are tucked way back there. I will say that this is the first time I've seen more of your tanks besides one Chimera move past your deployment zone. Well, Jake, and that's because and do all this fancy tall arms. That's stuff. because normally by the end of turn two my opponents concede it so I've never had much chance to get out of the the you know, zone. Crimson but fists are stubborn. That, that was fun moving them up there in formation and whatnot, and they were moving pretty quickly. That was pretty so. impressive. Yeah. Um, that I was love pretty the, cool. Love the talent doctrine. All right, we're going to come back and talk a little bit about this game before we pack up and head home. This is, this is Piper. Yeah. All right, so, Jake, uh, congratulations. That's the first time the 17th Shetland Light Dragoons have lost on the channel. Uh, but it's been close a couple of last games. I think uh, people have figured out a couple of things. What, what's your feelings about the game? For one, people are like, what is that guy doing with his army setting him up in that way? Um, I don't know. This is my third or fourth Space Marine game against Michael. It's always come down to the last couple of turns. Um, my, my deployment, I'm just like... Those alpha striking units, if they get behind me, I gotta mow them down and worry about them. Plus, they can do some damage with those uh, stormtroopers you got there, the Tempestus Scions. They're really good. So, I, mean, I was just like, bam, put the guys out there. Oh, have a guy three inches away from an objective. Well, while I have my captain, I'll put him back there. Uh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this game. Uh, cards, I think we're in my advantage. I think uh, your cards. I think if you had better cards, you definitely would have won also as well. Um, not sure if you would table me, but I think no. it's big, big cards. And it's, I think that's, I just, I played the cards I drew, uh, just trying to get points. So clearly a lot of firepower on the guard side. Uh, lackluster first turn shooting after I stole the yeah. initiative. But after that, they were pretty ace the entire game. Mm -hmm. Um 
and good mobility as well. But it did really come down to cards and then at the end, having enough stuff to be able to push forward. Uh, once you had destroyed my chimeras, that was a lot of my mobility for the things that can kill you out of line of sight. Yeah. And that the chimeras can push forward and the guys can jump out and then advance and, and finally get to see you. Those tanks uh, are fairly fast, I thought we saw. Yeah. But they start sacrificing a lot of firepower when they move over half their speed or all their firepower when they move in advance and then get the order to move in advance again. Yeah. So um, not enough artillery to shoot the things that are line of sight. I, I do like the mana cores, but perhaps just being limited to four rounds of shooting, or in this case it was three rounds of shooting because I used a storm strike. Uh, Storm Eagle rocket in order to try to kill those assault, assault marines yeah. um, certainly hurt me. So I, I'm gonna have to kind of play around with my list. I I feel pretty good. You know, a lot of people early on were like, "You need to bubble wrap all those tanks." I don't think so. I think I got plenty enough firepower that I can knock back most threats. I mean, what you do for bubble wrapping is preventing somebody dropping in on you, and you do that very well. Your stuff hang backs until the end of turn three. To see what that guy does with his uh, his units, um, that's kind of the way I've played with my guys. Um, I've been racking my brain over stuff. I mean, the only thing I could think of that I told you guys like when I first got here that I haven't tried yet is using my Forge World Dreadnought Drop Pod, dropping a Dreadnought in there, dropping him nine inches from something I need to destroy with the Multi Melta and the Dreadnought uh, Power power weapon or a, or a, or a siege hammer dreadnought mm -hmm. and just he's there you don't knock out that transport I think it has 12, 12 wounds on it maybe okay. the, the forge world one I can't remember. Pod? I'm sure yeah. it's 10 or 12 yeah, I'm it's sure 10, it's 10 or 12 tough. I mean you know it stays there and then bam surprise a guy disembarks 3 inches then he moves 6 inches and he's in your grill and he starts uh, wrapping up some of those tanks um Maybe you could do that with the uh, assault squads as well if you get, uh, you know, but the, just just dropping Terminators nine inches away or the, the assault squad like I did trying to go after that Manicore missile launcher tank. You either get into combat or you don't. You're probably going to destroy one thing when there's that much firepower back there to knock you out. So, I mean. Yep. You get one chance at that apple. Yeah. Uh, this was my first game with the 17 Shetland Light Dragoons following the release of GW's newest FAC. Uh, so a couple of things have changed from the way I've been playing them. The first one, uh, I had sometimes used the ambush rule, sometimes not. Uh, clearly that's changed. I can only put one vehicle or vehicle squadron in ambush now. And more importantly, when you bring them on, it counts as moving the full distance, which is how we played it most of the time in the past. Yeah. Um, but it just kind of confirmed that. So obviously a lot less useful for Talarn players now. Uh, the best use for that was really to prevent Alpha Strike your tanks and bring them on that first turn and get the yeah. full round of shooting, but that's that's not possible. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other things that changed for my list was I used uh, the take cover order quite a bit. They, they fact that now it only applies to infantry, which I thought was a lot of fun. So I was using my infantry uh, I, I joked that was a death sentence to whoever I put it on, but I was putting on the units that you needed to kill, and then yeah. you would kill them despite the increased armor save. And part of that was because Crimson with Crimson Fist, Fist rule, yeah, ignoring the uh, terrain. I mean, if it was just against my Scions in cover with take cover strategy and played on them, that would be a two up save against AP dash weapons. Yeah, uh, but it's not against the Crimson Fist. You you know, sixteen percent more vulnerable, so that. Again, I think is yeah. an underrated chapter tactic that, that yeah. you take full advantage of. So, And other than that, uh, understand why people are upset about the, uh, the commissars. I, I think it's a little ham-fisted fix by GW, but you know, certainly the guard codex isn't hurting right now, right, Simon? Mm, not so much anymore. Not so much. It's still doing okay. So it did change some things that we were playing with, but uh, we'll make adjustments and... I think I think the Shelties will be just fine. I personally like how uh, Jake uh, was setting up. He chose the side with the more objectives. Then the first uh, two rounds, he established a bridgehead with a f uh, first uh, defensive line, 
and after you breached them he just uh, uh, retreated afterwards yeah. and used the line of sight so it was actually a good play man let's yeah. just say fall back instead of retreat it sounds better yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, but they were retreating I'm civilian. <laughs> they, were, they were hiding tactical <laughs> repositioning of your units in order to take best advantage of the terrain yes. available and I think you did just that uh, it, if you saw the game that I played against Jeremy last, he tried to do the same thing with his orcs. He was a little bit less lucky and certainly had less things on the table to try to hide. Um, but if you can get up early on guard in the Maelstrom of War missions, and it really becomes a, a can I survive long enough to win? And I mean, we had that in our other two games, you know? Like, yeah. it's just... It was disheartening yeah. when I drew those uh, last cards. So uh, psychological thought, warfare is so very difficult to get. I thought for sure you're going to have, you know, get more objectives than the other guy. Get this. Te I mean, I, man, you know, right there, it's like after that second turn, I'm like, man, his card's just going to start popping. He has all those objectives now. Yep. You know, four of them. Sometimes it just doesn't happen for you when you use those mails from a war yeah. cards, and that's part of the fun. Uh, and mm -hmm. it certainly keeps you in the game. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes a little bit longer than every player, even the winner, wants to go on for. <laughs> yeah, it is late here. So, uh, final thoughts. Yeah. Piper's yawning. She probably wants to go for a walk before we go out tonight. So, did you want to go for a walk? You did. Okay. They do. So, uh, Arwen, too. Guys, any last thoughts? I was mean, super game. It was fun. As always, I enjoy playing. Uh, Mike's going to have some bloopers for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. For the I'm first not, time, so first stay, time stay on after the comments. We're going to put the bloopers in there. Yeah, I'm, my mind doesn't work the greatest. And uh, this is really fun playing here, really fun playing with these guys. You know, we have good times. Yeah, and uh, we got new players coming on the channel all the yeah. time. So we'll have another one coming up this weekend. If mm -hmm. you're local to the Stuttgart area or uh, you travel to Germany mm -hmm. in this area or you have your own uh, massive podcast with thousands upon thousands of subscribers and want to come onto my channel and promote us, uh, you're more than welcome anytime. So. For free. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll give you a shout out in return. So yeah, there you go. That's about all we can do. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and subscribe and like. And uh, Piper, you want to go for that walk, huh? Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I don't remember. Well, you started off by... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we start over? Yeah. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> okay, okay. There's a lot that happened. And it started with you killing my chimera. Okay. Let's start over again, please. Okay.